Hello and Happy New Year! 2022 is finally with us and I'm sure there probably aren't too many people who are sad to see the back of 2021. It has been a bit of a struggle for, for so many people. For me there were some highlights. Um, I really enjoy riding my bike and I specifically enjoy riding it on rail trails. I've also really enjoyed making these videos and then getting involved in conversations with you and being a part of this whole YouTube community. And I gotta say a big thank you. I was really touched by a lot of the um, messages of concern regarding my recent accident. That was really heartwarming and totally appreciated. So I thought I would reflect on 2021 by thinking about all the rail trails I've ridden on and picking my favorite five, and then from that five, putting them in a rank order. And this video is the result of that. Now, I'm sure that some of you may disagree with um, some of my choices, and if so, that's great. Put it in the comments below and we can have a little bit of a discussion about it. At number five on my list, I've got the Caledon Trailway. Now, I'm, I'm sure this is probably going to be a bit of a surprise to some people. I haven't got this ranked higher because this is an incredibly popular trail and it's also the trail that I've visited more than any other rail trail in southern Ontario. One of the big reasons for its popularity is there are so many picturesque small towns and villages like Tottenham, Palgrave, Caledon, Inglewood and Terracotta and these are all excellent places to get refreshments and socialise and in contrast to these bustling little hubs there are beautiful quiet parts of the trail as well where you can feel quite isolated and alone. But the reason that it doesn't sit higher than fifth on my ranking is that it is just a little bit too popular and a little bit too busy around those main towns and villages. Coming in at number four on my list is the Hamilton to Brantford Rail Trail. This trail actually benefits from the fact that it's not just close to Hamilton and Brantford, but it's also within reasonable striking distance of Toronto as well. It differs from any of the other trails on this list insofar as you actually have to climb a decent amount for the first 10 or 13 kilometers as you go in through the Dundas conservation area. Eventually you come out onto a broad plateau and you're rewarded for all of your efforts with expansive views of the surrounding countryside. A one-way trip on this trail is about 32 kilometers. So if you were to go from Hamilton to Brantford and then back again, it would be about a 70 kilometer journey, what with uh, various detours. And although it is a very popular trail, um, sites like this are fairly rare. At number three is the Halliburton County Rail Trail. Now this is very distinct and different from all of the other trails on this list in that it is a true and genuine multi-use trail with pedestrians and cyclists sharing it with both ATVs and snowmobiles. And what this does is it means that the surface in many places is really churned up, making it not too suitable for road bikes or novice cyclists. The other reason it's so distinct is that its position on the Canadian Shield makes for some really spectacular scenery. Now 
Now this may look like a derelict shed, but it's actually the old standard chemical factory built around the turn of the 20th century, and it's a really early example of a building that's made almost entirely of concrete. The runner-up on my list is the Cambridge to Paris rail trail, and I'd have to say of all the trails that I've visited, this is probably the busiest, with each of the um, parking lots at the trailheads being absolutely rammed full of cars. But if you're into peace and tranquility, you shouldn't necessarily bypass this trail. The entire length of the trail runs alongside the Grand River, and the river itself is just so relaxing. And even where the river was well used, I found just sitting there watching boats drifting downstream to be really serene and restful. By the end of this ride I realised that I'd been smiling almost the whole way. Before I get to my top pick, I want to give an honourable mention to the Tiny Rail Trail. This trail starts up near Penetanguishene. And you can just tell by looking at the trailheads that enormous pride has been put into the maintenance of these trails. The trail gets pretty well used because it forms part of the Simcoe County Loop Trail. It's been really difficult for me to decide between the various trails which ones I liked more than others and which ones should be on the list, but I had absolutely no doubt when it came to deciding which was my favourite rail trail, and that's the Uxbridge to Lindsay rail trail. This trail doesn't have lots of little villages to stop at and get refreshments, and it doesn't have really well marked trailheads where you can park. And the surface is pretty decent, but it is liable to flooding in the spring and after a heavy rainfall, so why did I like this trail so much? It's because, apart from livestock, I didn't really see anybody else. This trail was just the absolute epitome of peacefulness. I realised as I made this list that I was going on emotion and how a trail makes me feel. And well, this trail just makes me feel so relaxed and so contented. And in the end, as we struggle with our daily lives and we put up with the reality that is COVID, that's kind of what it's all about.
I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Maybe you agree with my choices, maybe not. Either way, put a comment below. And also remember, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. And I'll see you on the next ride.